So this is the third section of Karen Thorny's um, feminine psychoanalysis. So after you have learned about the idea of basic anxiety and narrow techniques, I'm going to explain to you the idea of uh, describing one's personality, one's uh, maladjusted personality, in fact, uh, how it uh, how it is affected by uh, those four self-protective mechanisms that have been described in the in the in the previous section. So, if one if one person, uh, the neurotic one, uh, apply applies uh, one or more uh, strategies to protect themselves from basic injury, uh, they would show a trend, yeah, a trend or pattern of behavior that consistent to their neurotic needs. Uh, and it could be indicated by uh, three types or two, three groups or three different classification of neurotic trends. So this trend would show a a person attitude towards themselves and other people and this this narrative trends is actually a description of maladjusted personality so this is not normal not healthy one even though uh karen horney still believes that one could have healthy personality but she do uh, she explained a lot about uh, abnormality as most psychoanalysts would do and um, in this neurotic, uh, in in the neurotic person, uh, one trend would uh, could uh, be quite dominant compared to another, while the other two would <clears throat> would still show, but in a in a lesser extent. Yeah. And uh, Karen Horney herself, uh, she called these as three categories of directional movement of the neurotic trends. So there are three categories that um, uh, that show uh, completely different uh, ways to cope with basic anxiety, and it would shape the whole personality. So the first one would be the compliant personality. So this is the first uh, neurotic trend, yeah, that shapes uh, someone's personality. <clears throat> so this personality is driven by the trends of movement toward other people so this is was uh, this is how I described uh, people who submitted themselves being submissive to other people so they try to move toward other people and the most uh, dominant needs that they have uh, are affection and approval and also a dominant partner because this person uh, is highly submissive so, uh, they need a dominant partner to fulfill their desire and the second types yeah, of personality is that the aggressive one yeah aggressive personality instead of being submitted to other people this person would aggressively influence and seeking influence from other people and there are five different needs yeah, from the neurotic needs that are very dominant in, their, in, in this personality. So the first one, of course, it's power, exploitation, and prestige, admiration, and achievement. So this person would, uh, would appear as a very ambitious and competitive person because they need that to establish their, their, their superiority over people. And the third um, uh, the third types of narrow uh, of personality, according to Horney, is that uh, detached personality. So this person, instead of being submitted to other people or aggressively seeking influence to, uh, from other people, they withdraw themselves uh, from social relation because they could not bear the risk of being hurt by other people. Yeah, so instead of moving toward or against other people, they're moving away from other people. And there are three different needs that are very dominant in this personality types. Uh, the first one would be, of course, uh, self-sufficiency, sufficiency, perfection, and no limits of life. And <clears throat> I would uh, explain to you the first types of personality uh, and how... Uh, they will react in coping with 
their basic initially and how they establish their relation with other people. So this compliant people, uh, compliant uh, person, would move toward people, yeah, in order to gain their attention and affection and approval. So they have a extremely an intense uh, desire to uh, to be loved, to be wanted and protected by other people. And so that's why they need a very dominant person, such as their friend perhaps, or a spouse, that will take charge of their lives. And this person would protect them along the way and guide them along the way. But the problem is that they manipulate others in, in, in that ways. They appear themselves, they try to present themselves of being weak and weak and fragile in order to gain protection from other people while they're actually not that fragile, not that weak. But they do so in order to get attention and affection from other people. So that's why people who, uh, who has this compliant personality, they manipulate others so that they will achieve that goals of getting affection and attention that they want. And they do so by subordinating themselves, subordinating their personal desires. They put aside their uh, personal desires in order to get to gain affection, in order to get attention from other people. So they will fulfill every wishes of other people by not being assertive, not being critical, and or demanding to their partners. Sometimes they would just like. Do whatever the partner wants, yeah, to get to get their love and affection. And they often, this is a very um, interesting sentence yet yeah, to sum up the whole idea of compliant personality. And this person who has this personality would say, "Look at me, I'm so weak and helpless. Then, you, so that's why you need to protect and guide me, and love me." Yeah, so that would be the sentence that. Uh, sum up the whole idea of compliant personality. But the even though they have this um, feeling of subordination, yeah, and so being submissive to other people, they actually try to repress, yeah, of defiance. They they try to defy other people. They try to confront other people. They they they, they have disagreements, yeah, to their parents or to their partners. But they choose not to show that. They choose to repress it. Yeah. So this repressed uh, defiance from other people, it would give them a lot of disturbance yeah, in later life. They also do have a desire to control. And in fact, they, be, they are being submissive in order to get control yeah, of other people. So it's completely opposite from what they appear to be. Yeah. Um, it's actually they are being submissive in order to get control. Yeah, it's quite quite contradictory uh, from what the behavior expresses. Yeah, and this um, this um, impulses that they try to repress. Uh, <clears throat> they are being subservient. Yeah, so they always trying to please other people and asking nothing for themselves. And this is not because they don't have their own wishes. They choose to repress it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm just giving you an example. Uh, I think this is a perfect example of of people who are being compliant. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure whether you are familiar with Bella Swan from uh, the uh, the from the movie of. I'm not sure. I don't remember the title. I don't even remember the title of the movie. Yeah, that involves the vampires and so, I think. Uh, and it looks like she would be a very good representation of, of people with compliant personality. So, um, starting to discuss the, the, uh, the second type of personality, according to Horney. So it's the aggressive yeah, personality. So it's completely opposite to, um, to the first one. Yeah, so this person that has aggressive personality, uh, they move against other people instead of, to, uh, instead of moving towards other people. And they are extremely driven by the desire to 
to be superior yeah from other people and they perceive that in this world everyone is hostile and of course the the uh, the fittest the strongest person would survive so they would uh, strive for the uh, for the strength and the superiority so they would survive as a person and even they judge they rather harshly judge everyone in terms of the benefits that could get from that relationship so uh, those uh, the rela- the social relationship that this person yeah the aggressive personality uh, seeks it would be quite artificial and sometimes it's just a relationship with benefits so nothing genuine in their relationship and this person would appear quite confident yeah when uh, when countering people and confident with their abilities of course sometimes they are overconfident with their abilities and they are excessively defensive yeah so when someone is being critical to this person they would like completely dismiss the, the critics and even though they appear strong confident and uh, fearless i would say they it's actually based on repressed uh repressed hostility yeah hostility that they repressed completely so it's actually roots rooted from the feelings of being insecure they are very anxious about themselves and sometimes they they, they have to because it's a, as a manifestation of repressed hostility this person is a perfect representation of uh, aggressive personality yeah so not only being a narcissist yeah he actually um um describe his wishes his uh, his goals in in life by uh, by one word that reflect completely reflect this aggressive personality so his theme of life is winning i think in one interview that i've read and this this is a perfect um example of uh, of of one aggressive uh, person yeah so this person would say that uh can be competitive surpassing others as a central theme of their lives yeah and the third and the last part of uh of the neurotic trends yeah neurotic personality would be the detached one yeah so instead of moving towards or against other people they moving away from them yeah and this is a strategy that they do to um to maintain an emotional distance from other people so when they are a being emotionally distant from other people they would not risk themselves of being hurt so that's why they understand themselves uh that no one should love or hate or cooperate with others in any way yeah so they see they strive for a complete a complete self sufficiency and total detachment from other people and people with this detached personality they have uh an enormous need yeah to uh to uh, for privacy yeah so they they really really value privacy more than anything else and detached personality is rooted from uh the suppression of feelings yeah from uh, toward other people so they they it, when they choose not to uh form social uh, not to uh, have many social relationship with others it doesn't mean that they don't want it they still need they still have that uh need to to relate with others but they choose to repress it instead of um instead of uh fulfill that wishes or desire because they understand that intimacy would lead to conflict and therefore it should be avoided yeah because no intimacy no conflict <laughs> and because of this constriction uh they have uh, they have a great emphasis of reason logic and intelligence so they value that more than anything else so they value logic and reason and intelligence much more important than social relationship so um not sure whether you are familiar with this guy so this is a um christian Christ mccandles from the mistaken yeah and he is from uh, a movie a title in the title would be into the wild if i'm mistaken so he chose he chose to 
travel and live in Alaska instead of getting into a medical school if I'm not mistaken and he lived there by the by himself and he tried to become self-sufficient so I think he is the perfect representation of this personality and this movie is based on true story if I'm not mistaken and it's actually it's actually a perfect example of perfect de- depiction of uh, the needs of being self-sufficient from other people I think that would be oh yeah so this is the last uh, part of this section so um, to compare those three uh, neurotic trends uh, quite uh, clearly yeah is that uh, by those three sentences so people who has this compliant personality they would say I should be sweet I should be self-sacrificing I should be saintly to other people while people with aggressive person they would describe themselves as a powerful and a winner yeah recognized and has this prestige and ambition and people with detached personality they would say they would describe themselves as being independent aloof and perfect so that would be the last part of uh, this section i'm going to continue with the idea of uh how we perceive ourselves yeah so it's it's about the idealized self-image